Welcome back to the One Day Talk Show. The unstoppable theme this month has been very supported by all the guest speakers we've had today um, with Katie this morning talking about mindset and making goals and Cherie talking about that, um, all the different um, hidden things that in our lives that can kind of keep us from meeting our destiny. And Martha with her wonderful talk about how we can uh, get in our own way with the goals with our unconscious um, minds, I guess there would be a good word for it, <laughs> just getting in our way of um, making those goals come true and how to find that um, way of doing it that fits with your life. And um, I'm really excited to hear more about that sometime down the line. And then um, today I am going to be sharing with you also, um, my uh, little conversation is going to be with you for, um, yeah, oh, I, well, this, um, just so you know, these are going to be replays are going to be available and I will be sending them out into the emails um, to the whole group. Um, and so if you're here at, in person or whether you're here listening to the replay, I really appreciate you coming and seeing this uh, presentation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. There we go. See if I can get that to share. Can you guys see that okay? Okay. There we go. Okay, dokie. So um, I really am glad that you're all here. And what I'm going to be talking about today is how many of us as women, as mothers, as um, just women in the world uh, get into the whole uh, feeling like we have to overgive. Um, it gets to the point sometimes with some people where it interferes with how they feel about themselves. And that's something that I would really like to address today. Um, because I think that it can hold you back in your business, it can hold you back in your life, um, in all parts of your life. So I'm Luann Horseman, and um, I'm an empowerment coach, and uh, I focus on women, um, helping them overcome their overwhelming um, and stressed out um, feelings, um, the overgiving, and also help them reach a life that is more fulfilling, um, peaceful, and um, just reach the type of life that they really want, where they can be a, a good a good woman, a, a super unstoppable woman. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a retired NICU nurse. Um, I was in NICU, uh, neonatal ICU with tiny babies uh, for 26 plus years, and I helped moms uh, get past the barriers of that isolate, the big plastic, you know, thing that the little babies were in and all the wires and the machinery and everything, help them overcome that barrier and become um, connected with their baby and bond with their baby um, and you know, feel that mother instinct come in and let it flow to that child and um, really support that child. I have, um, I have, I'm married to my high school sweetheart. We've been married for 41 years. And then I have two very special daughters and they are both married and they, and I have five grandchildren, which I love. <laughs> and I'm a certified virtual coach and neural transformational coach. And I think I'm a certified coach in the school, school of life because I've had a lot of different experiences that have uh, shaped my life a lot um, as a mother, as a nurse, as a person that's been fired from a job on, uh, that was not, um, deserved. I'm having to um, support my, to uh, keep my license intact. I had to go to court and oh my goodness, just so many experiences in my life that really helped shape me who I am and helped me know that I really want to help other women be strong and be able to um, meet obstacles head on. So uh, many times people that are in the overgiving mode are described as a nice girl, or they say, oh, you are so nice, or you're, you're just too nice. You know, like you um, tend to get in that overgiving, like to the point where you, you're giving over and it's never enough. You don't ever feel like it's quite enough. Um, so, you know, a lot of times that would, I, I would get stuck in that whole feeling of, I, is this enough? You know, I'm, I just don't feel like I've given enough of me. So that's something I've really struggled with and I've overcome. Um, 
and also to an, avoid uh, uncomfortable feelings to satisfy a need or try to produce a certain feeling of um, you know, boost your self-esteem, feel better about yourself by making somebody else happy. Um, somehow you make your own uh, heart happy. And just um, all these things are part of this overgiving. Um, do you want everybody to feel good? And then you, to the point that you sacrifice your own happiness for the uh, happiness of others. And there is a difference between like a generous giving, generous, generous giving and over giving. And the biggest thing is why we give. Um, if we're giving like, um, say that we're in the middle of a, um, your work day and you have a lot to do yet, but you find that your coworkers having some issues and you say, well, you know, let's go and have some coffee and we'll talk about it. Even though you're busy, you're doing it to help that person. Whereas with an overgiving um, spirit, you are, uh, you would say to yourself, well, I'm really busy, but I can help that person. I don't want to look bad to that person, or I want to look good to my boss and be a really giving person. And maybe some day she'll pay me back. So it's a total different attitude toward it um, as to whether or not you get something back. Usually with the generous, it's considered more of a, um, a the goodness of your heart. And, you know, so many of us get caught in this because we have the issues from our early childhood where we weren't, um, the messages that we got when we were growing up uh, kind of feed into that whole, I have to earn my um, enoughness. I have to earn my value. I can't just be valuable unconditionally. And it's not your, I mean, if you have this, I mean, it's not our fault. It's just something that comes up as a result of what we've had in the past, but it is something you can overcome. So some of the underlying reasons that we overgive is that we are trying to, to hide flaws or inadequacy. We feel kind of inadequate in our hearts. And so we give and give and give, and somehow that's going to make um, ourselves feel better. Instead of giving to ourselves and telling ourselves we love, love ourselves, we expect other people to tell us how wonderful we are. And somehow that um, makes our uh, self-esteem better. Um, it also can be, um, giving can also feel, uh, make us feel more worthy or like actually be needed. You know, like if I give and give and give and they depend on me, then I'm needed. And so um, that makes us feel more, um, have a feeling of power, uh, desirability, lovability, uh, dominant, be more in control of the situation. And at the most extreme uh, over giving is actually codependency. So giving can be used like a smoke screen uh, where you, you kind of uh, keep yourself back from the world um, and your, your human qualities are hidden so that people don't see underneath you feel like you're insecure and you don't feel good about things. Um, do you ever feel guilty about saying no? Saying no for a person that has overgiving is really difficult. Saying no um, and actually receiving per something from the other person when you haven't given enough to the other person really feels uncomfortable. So this is kind of all of the different things that you can um, see happening when you have this overgiving going on. And do you, I mean, a lot of times when you have overgiving in your life, you feel uncomfortable if you, if somebody asks for something for, from the community and you, you can't hardly wait to, you know, you can't ha handle that silence while people are, Step, gonna step up, you uh, volunteer right away because you can't, be, you're not comfortable with that, um, that, that quiet and the, uh, hesitancy. And then um, also, you know, they believe that the, uh, you know, that good people don't ever, you know, say no or let other people do things for you. Um, the whole, um, it is blessed to give, more blessed to give than receive is taken to a whole different level, which is not, I believe, the way the Bible meant it. Um, a lot of times they would, um, they don't so, say no without feeling really guilty. Uh, it also like, gives you this hollow feeling inside and you want to fix everybody. <laughs> you know, eroded intimacy because you, um, they can only love you for what they see on the surface. You're not willing to let them in. And sometimes you just get so tired. You can uh, barely keep up and uh, feeling um, unclean if you get get something from somebody else. Um, you feel like you have to make it up like really quick in order to be um, on the up of it. 
of the um, balance. If you're a giver, always look out for others. Always feeling drained because you break yourself so others can stay together. Take a break from it. Add value to your own life first. Add self-love and peace to your life first. And this is just essentially what I want to say today is, you know, you need to put your, um, your self-love and peace inside your heart. Um, and accept that you are valuable just the way you are. We all have our, our gifts and the inside we are uh, blessed to have um, our own abilities and our own special gifts um, and to accept that uh, and let go of the feeling that you have to uh, overgive. So some of the things that you can do about this is actually you need to set boundaries within yourself uh, on your time and what you do with your time. Uh, and whether you will do things or you'll not do things. Um, so you have to kind of figure out what these boundaries are inside you, and then you have to be able to communicate those to others in a powerful way and not in a cringing, oh, I, I, you know, I'm sad, I can't, or I, I feel guilty about this, but more in a powerful, um, with a, a show it with your body language and your words um, to um, communicate what your boundaries is with other people. And there always seems to be those people out there that um, resist your um, the first time you um, the first time that you put, kind of put those boundaries up, or even repeatedly, um, and just having a way of communicating to those people powerfully um, can sometimes is something that um, you need a little support with. And this is something that I do as a coach, as I help you come up with those the um, words and how you express those and then practice uh, that saying that in like, a, um, like imagine the, you're, that I'm the person that you have a hard time talking to. And that's what I do in my coaching is basically help you through um, this powerful communication. Um, and I also would like to invite you, I've got a freebie too, where you can switch off stress um, using, um, it's gonna be a five day Facebook challenge this next week where you can um, make your own um, stress relief kit. Um, each day, we're going to add a little bit more to your kit um, so that you have all the tools you need to feel um, like you can just switch off that stress right at your fingertips, um, have those tools. Um, a lot of times when you're in stressful times, you can't really concentrate on finding the solution for yourself. So having this set up ahead of time, a lot of times will help you because you can just go to this uh, kit you have, and then use those uh, to think calmer, think calm thoughts, feel calmer, feel more balanced, and not so burned out. So I will put this um, in this in the um, this SOS challenge in your in there so that you can um, join us next week. And actually, I'm going to have a contest of whoever has the most invites to the Facebook challenge is going to win a $20. Gift, uh, gift card to in my Amazon. So I'm, we're going to have a little contest just for fun too. The other thing that you can do for um, when you have this enoughness inside you and you'd like to get past it, um, to practice enoughness, to practice uh, saying to yourself with affirmations daily, most more times than one a day, usually. If you repeat it throughout the day, it will come in a lot faster that you were born worthy and that you're enough just as you are and that it's not your job to prove the worth to others. You have no need to prove to others that you are valuable and that you have worth. And practically, uh, practice proactively repeating throughout the day, what if I am enough? Kind of ask yourself that. And as you ask that, your sub subconscious will help try to find the answers. And we have part of our brain called the reticular activating system that looks for the answers. Um, like it sees patterns without in, in the world. And this part of your brain will actually look for the answer to these questions. If you ask yourself, what if I am enough? What if I am born worthy? And the answers will appear before you and sometimes even your, in your dreams or in something you read or see something in TV. And it's kind of like the same thing if you were, um, like say you just bought a red Outback. We just got a red Outback. So now I've seen red Outbacks everywhere. Or the other thing is like um, when I, first time I was pregnant, it seemed like I saw pregnant people everywhere. <laughs> or um, another thing is like, um, 
if you uh, decide that you are going to start a particular uh, practice, you know, see it everywhere on Facebook, it's advertised. This is that reticular activating system in your, in your brain working. And it's telling you, um, there's a pattern here. Check this out. This is what you were looking for. And it kind of points out um, what you um, need to have uh, to do whatever you would like to do. And it's kind of the whole part about um, what we think is what we are. Um, the whole of um, whatever you believe about yourself is what you actually will do. I mean, if you feel like you can't succeed, then you probably won't. Henry Ford said that. And the same thing it happens when you say that you're not enough, you find reasons why you're not enough. If you say you are enough or you are worthy, then you're going to see uh, proof of that throughout the world. Um, and also will help you be calmer, increase your energy and shift your vibration to a higher level. If you have this um, ability to change that overgiving feeling like you have to give to order to be enough um, to another, um, the feeling of I am enough and I am lovable just as I am. So another thing um, that would help with this is practicing receiving from others. Part of this is... Um, a difficult time receiving from others. Um, there feels like there's an inequity um, in your heart kind of feeling. You know, if you, somebody gives you something and you haven't given them equal or more, it, there's a discomfort there um, when you have this overgiving going on in your life. Say yes to receiving from others and ask for help from others. Another thing that goes on with the overgiving um, spirit or behavior is that you have a hard time asking for help from others. And that is so helpful um, for others because you're blessing them with being able to help you. And it's helping you um, do whatever the task is you want to do. Or if you are asking for help um, with your mindset or whatever, that all these things um, help you, but it also helps the person that's actually um, giving that help to you. And another thing is that we don't like to look like we're selfish. Um, and I think that women especially fear being seen as selfish. I had a really good friend um, that I've known since high school. She died recently and of cancer, but um, she always was afraid to be seen as selfish. She was such an overgiver. She, she gave and gave and gave and um, never felt like it was quite enough. Um, she was just really afraid that people would think that she was selfish. And um, we were able to talk that through before she did pass, but um, yeah, that was really hard for me to see uh, when I when I knew her younger. I didn't realize it was a problem, but as I did more coaching um, when I was certified and I figured out a little bit more with my coaching, um, a lot of these things came apparent that this is this is not a healthy way to be. So um, also I wanted to announce I do have a new YouTube channel and I have a lot of uh, different. Um, trainings on there. It's called Unleash Your Bold Heart. So thanks for being here. And if you wanted to contact me, um, email me at uh, Luann at BoldlyVisibleU.com. Um, that's my website is BoldlyVisibleU.com. Um, and if you have, would like to like continue this conversation and try to feel into this whole overgiving. If you see that behavior in your life and you'd like to make a change, um, I would love to offer you as a free gift for being here at the replay or being uh, present today, um, a free uh, roadblocks call where we can actually identify um, what is um, behind this need to overgive and um, point you the, in the right direction of what would lead on to the, you know, what would be the next step for you in order to um, work on this overcoming, overgiving, and so free up your heart from that need to overgive and actually feel much better about you. Um, so that's what I have to share. Does anybody have any questions or any comments? No? Okay. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> No, I was just going to say, you know, I, I, I love that you are bringing up this concept of overgiving and, and, you know, it's, it can so, show up in so many subtle ways. Um, even, even as showing up in, for example, in your money. So, um, 
I, for example, I, I discovered for myself a couple of years ago, I've been paying my dad's mortgage for several years because he hasn't been able to, to do that for himself. And I had been carrying that as, a, as an expense. It's my dad's mortgage. I'm not going to not pay it. I had been carrying it both in my personal finances and also in my system as an expense. Until it hit me one day, it's actually not an expense. It's a give. Yes. Yes. And just making that simple, sh and because I was carrying giving to him as an expense, I was over giving over here. Mm. And, and it was leaving me depleted. As soon as I was able to move that from expense to a give and actually honor the give that it was, all of a sudden there's more space back for me. All of the resentment that I didn't even realize was there started to fall away. You know, I, I just, I, I love that you are bringing forward the concept of overgiving because it, it's just... It can be so subtle and yet at the same time, so impactful. So I'm so happy you're bringing that up. Thanks, Martha. I just feel really strongly that so many of us um, nurturing women get stuck in this and don't even realize we are doing it. So that's one of the things I really want to focus on. And if we can uh, change ourselves, just think what we can do for the next generation. If we can change this within ourselves and uh, teach ourselves to love ourselves un unconditionally and accept ourselves unconditionally. We can pass that on to the next generation and make a big difference in the world. So that's my goal. <laughs> so that's all I have to say today, you guys. So I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for this one day talk show and being part of this group. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. And like I said, I hope you join my Facebook challenge and um, I will put that in the, uh, the replay email that will be coming out uh, shortly. And then um, also, um, I will hope you will come back and watch the replays again, because I think that a lot of times you catch more than the second time through. So that will be um, sent out to you shortly in the email. All right, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.